Hi friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Rain. Today we are going to see in detail about release from dormancy or how we can overcome the dormancy. And this is the third video in the seed physiology section. And the first video was regarding seed and seed structure. And the second one, uh, dormancy and types of dormancy. And in this video, we'll cover uh, what are the causes of dormancy and how we can uh, release from dormancy or how we can break the dormancy. Release from dormancy is actually a wake-up call for the seeds to, to germinate. Dormancy in seed physiology is defined as an arrested period of plant growth. And this dormancy has an ecological function. And what's the ecological function? How dormancy has an ecological function? Since it constitutes a survival mechanism of the species, ensuring its viability until the environmental conditions are adequate for seedling establishment and growth. Even though dormancy has an ecological function, on the other hand, it is an impediment to early germination. How? That is, it damages by impeding the early germination, it damages the large-scale production of plants. And the dormancy is mainly normally associated with the intrinsic factors related to the seed itself, such as hardness and impermeability of the integument to water or gases, immature embryos, inhibitors, and abiotic factors such as temperature, light, humidity, and substrate. And if I want to break the dormancy, to, to identify the method used to break dormancy, it is essential to identify the triggers for dormancy. Our first cause is seed coat. The seed coat, though it acts as a protective structure, it often imposes dormancy in many seeds. In many seeds are capable of uh, incapable of germinating immediately because of the hard seed coat which is thought to break open by the developing embryo if often does not imbibe water even oxygen does not diffuse in which are the most important factors favorable for germination thus the seed coat though it acts as a protective structure often imposes dormancy in many seeds that is prevents water uptake some plants produce seeds with a hard seed coat, which is also waxy. Thus, the seeds are rendered impermeable to water. That is, for example, in some Fabaceous members like pines, water enters through the hilum, which is made up of hygroscopic tissues. On coming contact with the water, the tissue swells and closes the micropyle. Thus, it prevents the entry of water into the seeds. Thus, it imposes dormancy. Next, some seeds, uh, though they are capable of imbibing water, they are incapable of taking atmospheric air. In Sandium, every fruit contains two seeds placed one above the other. And curiously, the lower one germinates under normal conditions, but the upper one does not until and unless it is subjected to high oxygen pressure. This behavior has become attributed to the presence of an inhibitor which will oxidize only under higher concentration of oxygen. Otherwise, it inhibits the growth of embryo. Prevents the growth of embryo. In amaranthus and some other seeds uh, belong to this category are capable of absorbing water and also oxygen. With this, the embryo is capable of growing but unfortunately it cannot break open the hard seed coat thus the germination of seed is prevented in this condition the seeds may remain for months or years until the um, said seed coat gets cracked or loosened in all the above mentioned cases the embryos are normal and do not possess any growth inhibiting factors but its growth is prevented by the presence of hard seed coat which either prevents the entry of water or oxygen or the seed coat does not crack and prevents the emergence of the growing embryo the only mechanism by which such seeds can be induced to germinate is to break the seed coat and make it weak so that the seeds can take up water and oxygen and facilitate the embryo to emerge out of the seed coat. And the methods uh, used to break this hard seed coat is mechanical scarification or chemical scarification. Mechanical scarification that is shaking the seed with abrasives 
or nicking the seed coat with a sharp edge metals or chewing the seed coats without damaging the embryo makes the seed coat to crack open. This greatly facilitates the emergence of embryo out of the heart coat. And next method is chemical scarification. In this case, the hard seed coats can be loosened by strong acids or solvent treatments where the hard coat is rendered soft. However, duration of the treatment has to be determined for every kind of seed. Otherwise, the treatment may cause damage to the Next course is immature seeds. Many plants shed their seeds before the embryo are fully mature. In such cases, germination fails to occur till the embryos reach a maturity stage. But some seeds may require a period of after, after ripening, meaning dry storage at room temperature before they can germinate. And the duration of the after ripening requirement may be as short as few weeks or as long as so many years. In the field, after ripening may occur in winter annuals in which the dormancy is broken by high summer temperatures allowing the seeds to germinate in the fall and in contrast uh, moist chilling during the cold winter months is effective in summer many summer annuals after ripening of horticulture and agriculture crop seeds is usually performed in special drying ovens that maintain the appropriate temperature aeration low moisture conditions next is temperature effect a large number of plants produce seeds which germinate under normal temperatures but some do not germinate if they are stored at room temperatures. Many seeds require a period of low temperature ranging from 0 to 10 degrees Celsius to germinate. In temperate zone species, this requirement is of obvious survival value since the seeds will not germinate in the fall but only in the following spring. Chilling seeds to break their dormancy. Uh, is referred as stratification. For agriculture practice, the dormant seeds are layered in mounds of soil or moist sand. Uh, today, seeds are simply stored moist in a refrigerator also. Stratification has the added benefit that it synchronizes germination, which ensures the plants will mature at the same time. Effect of light. Besides initiating many other photobiological processes, Radiant energy has a profound influence on seed dormancy and germination. Among the innumerable species of plant, some are sensitive to light radiations. Based on the above property of seeds, have been classified into three kinds, positive photoblastic types, negative photoblastic types, and non-photoblastic types. In case of positive photoblastic types, when seeds are exposed to one or two cycles of intense source of white light, they germinate. On the other hand, the negative photoblastic varieties do not respond to white light treatment, but they germinate if they are maintained in complete dark conditions. The non-photoblastic types are insensitive to light and they germinate irrespective of the presence or absence of light. Inductions of dormancy by chemicals. There are substances that induce dormancy in seeds. The compounds like comarin, paraascorbic acid, hydrogen cyanide, abscisic acid, etc., induce dormancy. Most of them have been isolated from the seed coats, endosperm pulp, and juice of the fruits of embryos. And these compounds that are known to the compounds that are known to overcome dormancy are gibberellins, cytokinins, ethylene chlorohydrins, theourea, etc. And the compounds that induce dormancy are substances that are non-toxic but induce dormancy until and unless the said compounds are either destroyed or leached out the seed remains dormant. The plants have unique properties in synthesizing compounds which can induce dormancy as well as break the dormancy. Of course the synthesis of such compounds takes place at different environmental conditions. In the play of uh, gibberellins and abscisic acid in seed dormancy. The action of gibberellins in breaking seed dormancy is interesting because they are very effective on seeds that require light treatment for germination. 
It is now known that both gibberellins and abscisic acid are synthesized in the same plastids and their synthetic pathway starts from the common precursor called mevalonate. And also, the synthesis of gibberellins and abscisic acid is correlated to red light and far red light mediated phytochrome activity. In red light requiring seeds, on exposure to the red light, more PFR pigments accumulate. Once the concentration of these pigments reaches a threshold value, they probably initiate the favor or favor the pathway of gibberellin synthesis and also they facilitate the release of gibberellins. The release of gibberellins in turn activates the respiratory activity and metabolic activities and activate certain genes biotranscription and translation resulting in the production of various components required for the active growth and development of the embryo. Thus gibberellins overcomes the dormancy and induces germination. On contrast, on contrary, the short day or far red induced dormancy is due to the accumulation of more PR form of pigments. These pigments in, fav in fact favor the pathway of synthesis and releases of ABA from plastids. Then abscisic acid brings about the inhibitory effect on cellular metabolism and imposes seed dormancy. It is also speculated that each of these components produced in response to different light treatments can't bring about feedback inhibition on each other's pathway and the interplay of gibberellins and abscisic acid in response to different light periods either in breaking the dormancy or imposing the dormancy it's very interesting thus the interplay of gibberellins and abscisic acid in correlation with the red light or far red light will decide the seed whether to break the dormancy or induce dormancy thank you if you like this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe our channel and please leave your valuable comments for improvement in next videos.